Hey everybody, today I wanna to talk about three behaviors that tend to kill relationships. And I'm talking about family relationships, personal relationships, romantic relationships, and make sure that you stay to the end because all three of these, once again, like most things can get intertwined, we'll talk about the science and the soul of relationships. But first, let's run the showreel. <laughs> So as a relationship coach, one of the biggest challenges I see is that people do not want to admit its mistakes and apologize. Perhaps they say, oh, hey, I'm really sorry for that, but they don't really take the time to really mean it, to really sit down and communicate with the person why they're sorry and to communicate that they will not do it again or that they're going to make an attempt to shift. And here are the action steps I'm going to take to shift. Because have you ever had someone apologize to you and then they keep doing the thing that they apologized for in the first place? Have you ever had someone give you an apology that didn't seem very authentic? So this is why it's so important when you apologize to your friend, to your family member, to your partner, that you acknowledge not only what you did wrong or maybe the mistake that you made or how you hurt them, but also what are the steps that you are going to take, that you're making an effort to change in order to not do that again? And then really show that you're making an effort for that, right? Because imagine now that even if you quote unquote screw up again, even if you make another error, even if they get upset, that you can say, hey, at least here's where, I'm, here's where I've made an effort. Can you see my progress, right? And sometimes that's what we need in relationship is just progress towards something more positive. So the second challenge that I see is people get interdependent. Did you know that the Greeks used to believe that humans had four hands and one heart? And the Greek god Zeus split them in half so they couldn't become more powerful than him. And so this is why they say that couples are always looking for each other. They're looking for the other half of their heart. But what can happen? is when we get into a partnership or even when we get in a really close best friend style relationship is we become overly dependent on the other person. We expect them to be there for us all the time, do everything for us and really fulfill every single angle of our life. Now, can you be everything for everyone? Absolutely not. So do you expect your partner or your best friend to be there for you 100% of the time and be able to fulfill all your emotional needs, all your physical needs, all your financial needs, all your spiritual needs, all your intellectual needs. That's a lot to put on other people. And yet this is what happens in relationships. People come become codependent upon each other where they become so enmeshed and entwined that they lose their individuality in a way that harms them and the relationship. So this is why it's so important to make sure that you tune in with yourself, that you create healthy boundaries, that you make sure that each one of you is getting what you need and that you all also have time to do what it is that you love and that you enjoy with other people. And with that same vein can come micromanaging, M trying to make your partner or your friend or your family member do exactly what it is that you want them to do in the way that you think that they should do it. Like, have you ever had somebody tell you what it is that you should do and exactly how you should do it? To take away your freedom, to make choice and explore it for yourself, maybe even make your own mistakes or find your own successes? Have you ever had someone tell you what to do in a way that drove you crazy? So this is why it's so important to know that other people get to make choices in the way they are. Now you can be curious about why they're doing something some way. But I remember I was at a park one time and I was camping and the people next to me, the woman's like, okay, I want you to cook dinner. And so the husband's like, great, I'm cooking dinner. So he's cooking dinner and she's like, well, how much butter did you, did you just, how much butter did you put in there? That seems like a lot of butter. And then, well, I sh you shouldn't put it on there for that long. Maybe you should take it off. Maybe you should take it off the fire. Maybe you're gonna burn everything. And she sat there and told me exactly how to do it and how he was doing it wrong the whole time he cooked. So does this seem like a moment that's gonna make for a really happy relationship? <laughs> like it was actually driving me crazy and I wasn't even part of it. I was sitting there listening to her going like, wow, dude, like either you should cook 
or let him cook in the way that he wants. And yes, you can be curious like, hey, just remember that XYZ happens, the butter will scorch if you leave it over the fire too long. I just wanted to remind you of that. Or hey, you know, sometimes you have to remind somebody not to get distracted. And is it the end of the world if dinner gets burned? Like really, is it the end of the world if something goes a little bit wrong? No, we all make mistakes. And part of the fun of a relationship and part of the test of a good relationship is being able to laugh at the mistakes, right? Laugh at the failures, laugh at the challenges. So if the butter starts on fire and all the dinner goes up in smoke, like, yeah, it sucks to eat a really crappy burnt dinner. And what a fun story. So you can make it playful, you can make it enjoyful. So instead of micromanaging, now you're creating synergy, you're creating memories, you're creating a story. And really, are you gonna die from one bad dinner? No. Remember, apologize when you need to, but really make it authentic and make the steps and effort to shift. Number two, don't become too codependent. And in the same vein, number three, stop micromanaging. Allow them to do it in the way they want, unless it's like really, really important. Like, hey, if you, you know, plug that in there first before you do something else, you're actually getting electrocuted. Like, you can micromanage that kind of stuff. But most things do not need to be micromanaged, and most people do not like being micromanaged. Builds up anger, builds up resentment, and nobody, almost nobody, likes being told what to do. Remember, you are love, you are loving, and you are lovable. Have a lovely day.